welcome back to my channel and to my bed. I felt like filming somewhere a little bit different today and also I kind of just wanted to show off how lovely and poofy this skirt is. And today's video is going to be about books because I really love, love, love to read and I thought that it would be really fun to show you some of my favourite books that have a vintage setting or story or something like that so <laughs> hopefully this is interesting to watch and I will describe kind of the theme of the books and what I think about the way that they're written and if they have any sort of spin-offs or anything like that so I'm really excited and I hope you really enjoy it and let's get started with the first book and these are not in order of like preference they're just scattered around me and they will be in order of when I pick them up Okay, this one. So the first book that I wanted to talk to you about is Tangerine by Christine Mangan. I got this a couple of weeks ago and I bought it on like the Saturday um, when I was in Birmingham visiting my boyfriend and I read it on the train home. So I read it in about two hours-ish, which is fairly standard. Um, and I just got so unbelievably hooked on this book, like I was just sat on the train just like, like I could not put it down and it's such an exciting like thrilling, really gripping book, like it's just a page turner, you really just want to, you're trying to understand more about the characters and the story is um, I'll just read the blurb for you. The last person Alice Shipley expected to see when she arrived in Tangier with her new husband was Lucy Mason. After the horrific accident at Bennington, the two friends, once inseparable roommates, haven't spoken in over a year. But Lucy is standing there, trying to make things right. Perhaps Alice should be happy. She is not adjusted to life in Morocco, too afraid to venture out into the bustling Medinas and oppressive heat. Lucy, always fearless and independent, helps Alice emerge from her flat and explore, explore the country. But soon a familiar feeling starts to overtake Alice. She feels controlled and stifled by Lucy at every turn. Then Alice's husband, John, goes missing, and Alice starts to question everything around her. Her relationship with her enigmatic friend, her decision to come to Tangier, and her very own state of mind. It's so good. This is set in the mid-1950s, um, it's set in Morocco and also in Vermont, which I believe is in Canada, um, and it is from the perspective of both the protagonists, Alice and Lucy, so it switches back and forth between their perspectives, and it really keeps you guessing as to like who's telling the truth, it's like is this person mad, is this person manipulating her, like it's such a gripping amazing book so I really recommend this one if you're into kind of suspense and thrillers and mysteries I think this is a really great one to give a read of. So this is one of my favourites from last summer this is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and yes they turned it into a film. The film is not as good as the book but the film is still very sweet but I really love this um, it's an epistolary novel, so it's written entirely in the form of letters, which can be difficult for some people to get into. I know a couple of people that I've recommended the book to that said they couldn't get through it because they didn't like the letter form, so um, that's something to keep in mind, but it's about Juliet Ashton, who is grappling with writer's block um, when she receives a letter from Dorsey Adams, who is a resident of Guernsey which was occupied by the Germans during the Second World War, so this is set in about 1946, and she starts writing to him and finds out about this society that formed on Guernsey called the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, and starts to learn about all of its members and the hardships that they went through during the war and all of their different perspectives. It's such a beautiful mix of like history and yet making it very very personal and understandable and finding out about the different kinds of people during the war I suppose. Um, 
it's just really really thrilling and it's really sweet and I just have really happy memories of just sitting um, outside a pub reading this for like a couple hours with a coke by my side so it just does it kind of brings up happy memories for me but it's just such a beautiful lovely book and it has sad moments but it's generally really uplifting really funny and I just I really love this so this is a great one to kind of relax to I think now this is a book that I actually mentioned in my August favourites if you saw that video um, and this is No Silver Spoon by Kate Flynn and it is set in Connemara in the 1920s so it's a bit earlier than my usual period um, and it follows two, the lives of two people so Dimpna Burns in Connemara and Jimmy Ruddock who lives in Liverpool and how their paths kind of intersect over the years. It's a very big book as you can see. I just really enjoy the writing style of this one. It's very personal again and you really get a feel for the characters and you get a feel for exactly what life was like in that time. Um, it's really fascinating and you know there's a lot of family dynamics at play. It's just really really interesting. Um, so I really, really did enjoy this book. I think this is another, this is another summary one and I maybe only think that because I got it when I was on holiday in Devon in the summer. So it's possibly, you know, my own memories tainting this. But it's a really good, like, curl up at night and read kind of thing, if that makes sense. So, um, No Silver Spoon by Kate Flynn. Highly recommend. Tagline says, if you're born with nothing, you have nothing to lose. So, this is a book that I haven't finished reading yet, um, but that I still really like and really recommend. This is by Caroline Beecham, and it says it is called Eleanor's Secret. It is set in World War II, and it is about um, a young woman called Eleanor Roy, who is determined to do her bit for the war effort after being recruited by the War Artists Advisory Committee. Um, and then meets a handsome man called Jack Vellante and he promises to help her pursue her ambition but after a whirlwind romance Eleanor is devastated when Jack is posted overseas. When Eleanor receives some unexpected news she desperately tries to find Jack torn apart by war. Will they be re reunited and happy at last? I don't know the answer to that because I haven't finished reading it but it's really sweet. It's um, quite a girly novel I guess. Um, I really, really enjoy this one. It is good at evoking the feel of the setting. It's got some really nice um, descriptions of the places where things are happening. And it's not as... Um, I didn't find the characters as family oriented as some of the other books so some of the other books like the relationships to other characters are very much some of the driving force this is very much short of the protagonists are on their own and you understand how they're feeling but they're not too strongly connected to too many other people um, so if you like that kind of thing then you'll probably really like this and I can't wait to finish reading this now that I have more time to read for pleasure because I finished my English I'm just oh I can't wait to get this done the next load of books is actually a set of books. There's one under my skirt. I can feel it. Ah. Where's the other ones? Ah. And this is the Bullworths series by Elaine Everest. And this is one of my favourite favourite sets of books. It's kind of the reason that I'm doing this video to be honest. This is, well this is The Butlins Girls which is kind of a spin-off of the Woolworths Girls series but it's still really fun and this is a standalone book but the rest is a series um, about three girls, Sarah, Freya and Maisie who um, the first book starts just before the war in 1939 and the last book finishes um, in 1946, I believe, just after the war is done. And it's 
so amazing. It um, chronicles, you know, their lives, their experiences of the war, how it impacts them in different ways, their relationships with marriage and family and children and that kind of thing, um, how they have different attitudes about how the war is run and how um, it's reported on. Um, it's amazing and I genuinely have nearly cried at these books. They're like really sad in places but they're generally so uplifting and so happy and the characters feel really personal to you and they feel like real people that you could realistically still meet today. Um, my favourite character is Maisie. Um, if you read the books then she's amazing. She's my favourite. She's really spunky and described as always being put together so that's kind of why I like her. Um, but I would recommend this series of books to literally anyone. They're so enjoyable. The writing style is competent but it's not overly complicated if that makes sense and it splits um, back and forth between different people's perspectives but still writing in third person so um, I just I just really like it. I really love the story. I really love the twists and turns of all of the characters and how everyone gets a little bit of happiness, everyone gets some suffering. It's just amazing. So I would 100% recommend reading any of these books. The last book that I am going to recommend is a book that I just got and I have just started reading. I got this when I was in Birmingham as well and it is The Italian Girl by Lucinda Riley and it flits back and forth between the 60s and then quite a few years later. Um, like I said, I've only just started reading it, you can see I'm barely into it at all. I'm going to keep reading it after I finish filming this video. But it is about a young girl who um, becomes an opera singer, so you can kind of see why I'm into it, vintage and opera in one book, and about how she is tied to and impacted by the man who encourages her first to sing. So it's really, really good. I'm really loving the writing style so far. It's set in Italy, so the family dynamic is very sort of specific. Um, and the backgrounds and the locations, the way everything is described is really rich and it's really beautiful. This is a great summer book, I feel. Like I can imagine reading this on holiday and being happy as a lamb. So I really, really, really am enjoying this book and I can't wait to continue reading it. So I will put all of the links, by the way, to um, in the description box for all of these video, all of these videos, oh my goodness, I can't talk, all of these books, so that if you want them, you can go down and find them because everyone should read more, I think. Reading is so much fun. So that's all of the vintage um, inspired or vintage set books that I have for you today. I really really hope that you enjoyed seeing some of my personal favourites and if you have a favourite book um, that is set in kind of a vintage era then let me know in the comments. I would love to see it and love to read it because I do really 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 enjoy reading and I haven't really been able to read for pleasure very much at all in the last few years because I've constantly been reading for my English so I'm very excited to get back into more reading. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, and don't forget that you can follow all of my social media. You can follow me on Instagram at AveryVintageDarling. You can follow me on Twitter at VVintageDarling. And you can follow my blog, which is AveryVintageDarling.wordpress.com. I love you all so very much. And I will see you in my next video. Au revoir. <laughs> really awkward when I can hear my roommate and um, my housemate in the room next to me and I'm like you can hear every word I'm saying can't you? It just feels weird. Hmm. Appreciation of makeup. Hmm. <laughs>